Happy New Year. Um, welcome to the January Wellness Webinar. A special welcome to anyone who may be joining us for the very first time. Thank you for, for joining us today. I'm Laura Maloof Miller. I'm a program manager in the wellness department here at HealthNet. And of course, Kristen Kayla, health promotion consultant with HealthNet, is of course on the line with me as well. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we begin. Um, everybody has been muted upon entry to avoid any of the you know, background noise. Uh, at the end of the webinar, there's gonna be a short four question anonymous survey. So we would appreciate your feedback. And if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please chat to Kristen. And just as a reminder, everyone who registered today uh, for this webinar will receive a link uh, to the recording in just a few days. All right, let's get ready to enhance our well being for an exceptional year ahead. So, this is the perfect time to reaffirm our commitment to good, healthy habits. So, you just want to think of it as a investment, a well being investment, that gift that keeps on giving, and it sets a positive tone for the year. So when we prioritize our preventative health, you know, you go to your checkups, you get your screenings. This, of course, allows for early detection and intervention. Also, we know that healthy habits positively impact our mental well-being, enhancing our mood and reducing stress. So I want you to just sit back, enjoy the presentation. And again, you'll receive a link to the recording and some of the educational resources that are included in this webinar today. The information provided in this presentation is intended solely for the general information of the audience. It's not medical advice and shall not replace consultation with your physician or other qualified health provider. If you have any health-related questions or problems, please seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider. Quite a few topics I will be covering today. If you make New Year's resolutions, I'll be covering some tips on how to keep them and how they can provide guidance and some motivation for this year ahead. We're gonna look at some healthy habits for a healthy start or a healthy restart to the year. Now we know mental well-being is really important as well. So we're gonna look at some ways to ensure we're managing our mental health too. If you're like me and you're recovering for some post-holiday financial strain, I call that buyer's remorse. Maybe you're asking yourself, why did I buy that huge flat screen TV or the new car? Um, unfortunately, 24% of us will actually carry that debt into the next holiday season. We're gonna look at some best ways to get caught up financially before, guess what's coming next? We got spring break and then we're on to summer vacation. And we'll start the year off right with some nutrition and fitness tips, and the significance of kindness, building some social connections and decreasing screen time. I'm gonna cover all of that today. However, before we jump in, I want to hear from you. I'm going to launch a poll. Do you have a New Year's resolution? Okay, give me just one second. Let me launch this. These are, of course, always optional, but if you would like to do it, feel free. Do you have a New Year's resolution? Yes, no. What is a New Year's resolution? All right, couple more seconds. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll and I'll go ahead and share the results. Kristen, let me know if they can see that or if I should be putting it up here. Can you see it? Hopefully you can see it. Yes, I can, thank so, you. 53% of us, no, really don't keep a New Year's resolution or have one. Um, but right behind that, 45% of folks who, who answered said, yes, they do have a New Year's resolution. All right. Well, thanks for participating in that. All right. Moving right along. Every year, many people do have the best of intentions when they create a New Year's resolution. 
Maybe it's things like eat healthier, you're gonna restart an exercise program, you wanna get a better handle on your finances, stressing less is always a very popular one, right along with losing weight and much more. But as we all know, resolutions, they're easy to make, but they're not so easy to achieve. So we wanna set ourselves up for success. That starts with a plan. Think about what kind of outcome do you want to achieve? Your why is super important. Why are you doing this? It's good to proactively identify the challenges that we all face. Things like weather, time constraints, pain, balancing work and family. So try to identify how we're going to work through these challenges. You want to visualize your goals. So you take those thoughts, something you want to do, and you turn them into short, clear statements of intention. Something like, I want to be physically fit so I'm no longer out of breath when I play with my grandkids. Or I want to have a better balance between my work and my personal life so that I have more quality time for myself. Great goals. So when we think about goal setting, we use the acronym SMART. You may have be familiar with this already. Being specific. What am I going to do? So you have to have a very specific plan in place when you start. It's got to be measurable, so something that you can track. For example, I'd like to practice meditation. It would actually be better to say, I will meditate twice a week for the next eight weeks. That's something trackable or measurable. It's got to be achievable. So you want to outline the steps that you can make this happen. I think a lot of times we forget to set a realistic goal. So this may mean breaking a goal down into smaller, more attainable goals. Got to be relevant. This is It's got to be important to you. So it should align with your values and your objectives. Also got to be time-framed. When, when will you do this? So you want to you want to set a specific start date, but don't just pick a date at random. It's better to already have a, to have a date when you have a plan in place. And of course, you want to get support by telling those that are around you. Tell them about your goal and try not to lose sight of what we're trying to achieve when we face temptations because we do, they will always be there. But in making your health a priority, it does take a commitment. Also, make sure to start out small. If you go with multiple goals, that could lead to frustration because you can't work on all of them while you're trying to integrate, you know, like work and life as well. So just pick one goal to work on. Now, if the less, let's kickstart the new year with some, here's some healthy tips. Now, this is a list of habits that you, you may think about starting or continuing this year. So we're going to start at the top. Being grateful is good for our health. Now, this is according to Robert Emmons, a psychology professor at the University of California, Davis. It turns out that counting our blessings not only reduces depression and stress, it also lowers our blood pressure. And it can also slow down some of the effects of aging. Get up and move more. Now, I'm not saying you have to be a world-class athlete. Maybe just walk around your neighborhood or ride a bike. Simply finding a routine that works for you. Think about using a tracking device, too, to gauge your current activity level. I personally am wearing a Fitbit. Now, when I first got it, I actually didn't bother to read the instruction manual. So I would look at it and it said, feed me. And I thought, wow, this thing's measuring my blood sugar. How does it know that I skipped breakfast and it's past lunch? Well, so I got up and got something to eat, right? But I soon realized. What it wanted me to do was to move, feed me steps. So anyway, I've not made that mistake again. And that's what I get for not reading the instruction manual. Sleep seems to be the one thing we think we can skimp on, but it's really hard to feel and do our best when we're tired. Sleep is so fundamental to our overall health. Getting together with family and friends does have a positive effect on our happiness. And we live better when we are socially connected to others. And what makes people feel fulfilled? Well, actually, when they give to others. Now, there is no shortage of people, causes, or organizations 
that can benefit from our time, our expertise, and our resources. So when we help others, we release the feel-good chemicals in the brain. Now, maybe this is the year that you learn a new language before traveling. Um, maybe you're going to try a new musical instrument or you're going to take a class. All of this is good for our brains. That's our brains need to keep learning as we age. And of course, making health a priority means keeping up with our medical checkups, vision and dental screenings, and any tests that are recommended by your doctor. So we know that good health is the foundation for being able to enjoy life. Now, there are lots of ways that we can put our mental health first. This is just a few uh, suggestions here on the slide. Mindful meditation is fast. It's also a really easy way to reduce stress wherever you are. So it's the practice of purposely being aware of and focusing your attention on the present moment. This focus can re result in enhanced physical and emotional well-being. If you have just a few minutes, you could do a, a focused breathing meditation, simply sit, close your eyes, take a couple deep breaths. You're simply focusing on your breath as it moves in and out of your body. Did you happen to know that dogs are good for our health? Why is that? Well, they get us moving. Dogs require regular exercise. Also, dog owners tend to interact more with other people. So that helps with social connection. And dog owners are less likely to experience depression. Probably the dog too. I don't know if our dogs feel depression, but when they're engaged with other animals and being social, perhaps they experience less depression as well. If you happen to work from home and you have a dog, they help combat loneliness. And of course, in my case, my dog is such a great therapist. He is such a good listener and he actually agrees with everything I say. Now, I'm not suggesting you run out and get yourself a puppy, but if you already have a dog, you may be enjoying some of these health benefits already. Joy is a powerful emotion and harnessing it can be a remedy for stress-related burnout. Now, most of the time, joy is a feeling that spreads to others through attitude and actions. Joy does look different to each person. Some people find joy in caring for others or spiritual connections or spending time in nature. Other people discover joy in activities, relationships, or personal growth. Did you happen to know what used to be known as a simple fun activity for kids is now a tool for practicing good mental health? I'm talking about coloring. So this has increased in popularity, especially for adults. So coloring is a healthy way to relieve stress. It calms the brain and helps our body relax. Now, my best friend, she's in a coloring group. So each week the group colors the same image and then they come together, they share their artwork. It's creative, it's social, not to mention fun. If you're like most people, you may have spent just a little bit more than you intended to during the holiday season. However, no worries. We can still catch up financially and have some fun while we're doing it. So take advantage of any fun outings that are in your neighborhood or your city. Look for things that'll get you outdoor, maybe like a local park or a trail or a day trip to the snow if you can easily get to it. And then as the weather warms up, you can maybe head to a beach or a lake or a reservoir, even your local pool, pack a lunch and enjoy the day. Now there are apps out there, there's an app for everything that'll get you outside and moving. So look for things like geocaching or a scavenger hunt apps. Those are free to download. And then of course, don't forget about the library, a lot of free activities there and bring some of those books home. That's actually really good for our brain. So when we read, our brain isn't just interpreting the words on the page. It's actually a neural workout. So that's always good. If camping, or in my case, glamping is your thing, many sites offer reasonable prices and check out a zoo or an aquarium. 
Oh no. Okay. So we just got through the holidays, right? Here it comes. Here comes the big game. I'm talking about the Super Bowl. It's on February 11th, followed by, guess what? Valentine's Day. And you'll never guess who came to my door yesterday. Our neighborhood Girl Scout. Apparently, it's Girl Scout cookie time. Really? Oh, my gosh. So she's using online technology. She left us with a flyer that has a QR code. All we have to do is scan it and order online. My teenagers were so excited. They actually were home from school yesterday. I heard them shouting things like, we need six boxes of Thin Mints. You know, I'm working on healthy habits right along with you. And there is temptation standing right next to me. So I have a bit of a plan. Um, I am going to order a box. And normally that box would go into my mouth. But this time I'm actually going to order it and I'm going to donate it to the military. We have active military in my family. So I think that's a better option for me right now. I'm also going to order cookies that I don't really like. And I'm also going to get them out of sight in the freezer. So it's good to have a plan. Okay, back to the big game. Look at this. This single event, the snack foods we're going to eat, consume, and this one event. Oh, my gosh. 15,000 tons of chips. I guess that must go with the 12 million pounds of avocado because then we're eating 8 million pounds of guacamole. Oh my gosh. And so snack crackers, frozen sh shrimp, not that's kind of a healthy choice. Um, but oh my goodness, 237.2 million spent on the soft drinks and then 11.8 million spent on the beer. This to me seems a little bit low on the beer, but you never know. So what can we do? You know, if, if eating well is one of your New Year's resolutions or you just want to do this for the starting out the new year, here are some healthier options from eatingwell.com. Baking or air frying is going to be a healthy alternative to deep frying. Also, I didn't know if you knew this, sweet potatoes are lower on the glycemic index, which means they don't raise our blood sugar as high as a regular potato. So if you're watching your blood sugar, that's kind of important to know. Um, and of course, anytime we can increase our consumption of veggies, that's a good thing. So you may wanna try the baked cauliflower nachos. You could top it with that 8 million pounds of guacamole that we're gonna consume um, with some melted cheese and some salsa. And so this makes a really great appetizer or could actually be eaten as a light dinner as well. So just some healthy options. Is it a challenge for you to eat fruits and vegetables every day? Uh, this is the one, two, three approach. This may be able to help you get your servings in. So one serving with breakfast, two with lunch, three with dinner, including snacks. So if you keep fresh, frozen, canned fruits and vegetables on hand, easy to toss them or add them into your meals, into soups or stews this time of year. If you go with a canned fruit, make sure to choose the kind that is in water, not in a heavy syrup. And also you wanna look for canned vegetables that are low in sodium or salt. I personally, I go with what is on sale, but I always will rinse those vegetables before I use them. And if you're looking for frozen vegetables, just get the vegetable itself. Try not to use the ones that are already in a sauce um, because that's going to, of course, save you on calories, sodium, and fat. So here are some ideas for breakfast, doing a smoothie. If you use a frozen fruit or some ice that will thicken up your smoothie, and at the same time, you can throw in a little spinach or kale. If you're going to be making pancakes or muffins or waffles anyway, just throw in some berries, some chopped fruit into the batter. Uh, I like to add vegetables, things like peppers or onions, mushrooms, spinach, just to pretty much about any kind of vegetable. I will add that to an omelet. It's also good with hash browns or breakfast potatoes. In February next month, I'm actually going to be doing a cooking demo 
on how I make a ground turkey, spinach, and sweet potato frittata. So if you're interested in that. Lunch, you can always, always add some extra vegetables to your sandwich. You can use uh, vegetables as the wrapping of your sandwich if you would like to do that as well. If you go with maybe like a homemade vegetable soup for lunch, but if you're buying prepared soup, you wanna compare the nutrition label. You wanna choose the one with the lowest amount of sodium. And you really have to watch the serving size because like one can, uh, for example, Pro Progresso soup, one can is actually two servings. So if you pour that whole can into your bowl, which is very easy to do, you need then to double the calories, sodium, and fat. Building a salad with some leafy greens, all kinds of vegetables can go into that, including fruit. Topping a baked potato with some salsa or some broccoli with a little bit of melted low-fat cheese or both, broccoli, cheese, and salsa. Sounds good to me. Uh, making a stir fry with dinner, with lots of different vegetables. Tonight, I'm actually doing a curry. And so I'm going to use some mushrooms, some cauliflower, some sweet bell peppers, onion, and some water chestnuts. I will add some chicken as well, but um, you can always leave out the chicken if you like a vegetarian option. Grilling vegetables with a little amount of oil or the oil spray. Um, I like to grow fruits, things like peaches, pineapples, mangoes work well. My personal favorite is to grill Napa cabbage. So I literally will slice it in half. I'll put a little olive oil on that, some salt and pepper, but it's winter, okay? So roasting right now is probably a bit more practical. Same thing, I put a little heart healthy oil on there, some salt and pepper. I roast vegetables in a hot oven and then those vegetables, they just caramelize to a really sweet flavor. Oh, here's our next poll. I'm going to talk about exercise. How? How do you fit exercise into your schedule? So you can pick more than one choice on this one. Let me go ahead and launch it. Oops. Let me see. Let me put this down here. All right. I'm going to launch that one. All right. How do you fit it? You get Whoops, okay, here we go. Again, you can pick more than one option here. How are you fitting exercise into your schedule? Sometimes this is really hard to do. Do you use your calendar? You set maybe alarm on your phone that goes off. Some folks have like a little post-it note somewhere where they can see it. Maybe you have got a dog. Um, maybe you have a workout buddy or you just simply can't find the time. These are polls are of course always optional, but if you'd like to do it, sounds good. All right, let's see what we got here. Let me share the results. All right, so using the calendar came in at 46%, followed by setting an alarm on the phone, great idea. And then followed by a dog. 20% of the folks who answered have a dog, followed by 18% just can't find the time. 17% uh, have a workout buddy. And then a post-it note. So thank you again for participating in that. It's kind of fun. See what people are doing. All right. So we know that variety is a key to a healthy diet. Well, it turns out it's also a key to a fit and a healthy fitness routine. So a well-rounded routine should have what you see up here, a variety of activities that work the different areas of your body. It's nice to have a bit of a mix because of course that prevents you from being bored. Uh, and of course lowers your risk of getting injured. So activities that are gonna get your heart rate up, that's gonna keep your heart healthy. It's also going to boost your mood and positively affect a lot of different chronic conditions. So when we think of exercises like this, we think of walking, running, biking, swimming, rowing, using uh, like an elliptical machine and many, many more. When we are thinking about lifting free weights or using our body weight, think of the whole body. Think of things like legs, arms, stomach, and the back. 
Strength training helps build muscle. It strengthens those bones and it prevents injuries if done properly. You can also do exercises that don't require weights. So think of push-ups or calisthenics, squats, planks. We know that flexibility improves our joints range of motion and it makes daily tasks much easier. So you wanna stretch after your workout when your muscles are warm. And proper body alignment not only prevents pain and injury, and also improving your posture, it will actually take some time and a conscious effort. Everybody's probably sitting up straight in their chair now. Um, but you know, the feel good benefits are worth it. Balance training. So this improves your body's ability to react quickly to everyday missteps. And of course it helps prevent falls. Now during exercise, balance also helps you to move more efficiently for improved performance and injury prevention. What is key though? Consistency and safety. Those are key roles in a fitness routine. You have to think of exercise as a lifelong activity. So ideally your week should include at least two days of strength training and at least 150 minutes, which is about 30 minutes most days of the week of moderate aerobic activity. The things like flexibility, the posture and the balance, that kinds of things can be worked in throughout the week. So how do we fit it in to our busy lives? Well, the most common excuse to avoiding exercise is what? I don't have the time. However, it's likely you can find 10 or 15 minutes from distractions, things like you're watching TV or you're online shopping, where you're browsing social media challenges, channels throughout the day. So find ways that you can be active for the benefit of your health. And you have to plan ahead. So you need to look at your schedule and identify what are the ideal times that you could work out. Some of us bring our shoes or maybe even an extra jacket so that you're ready to walk on your lunch break. Now, once you've planned your workout, then you have to schedule it. So like most people said here, write it into their planner create a calendar entry with an automatic reminder. So when your day is planned, you have set yourself up for success. Now, the goal is to aim for about 30 minutes of activity about five days a week. But the 30 minutes daily doesn't need to be consecutive. So you could split it up into 10 minute or 15 minute segments throughout your day. And here are some Examples of how to get some of that activity. When you have the opportunity, take the stairs. Even a few minutes during the commercial breaks, if you're watching TV, walk around your house, get a few steps and march in place. You could always take a stroll maybe around your neighborhood. Um, we know that sitting too much is just as bad as smoking. So make sure you get up, move around, just step outside for a few minutes, maybe do some gentle stretching. Have you joined a gym this year? Or maybe you're out in the gym and you find it so crowded with all the New Year's resolutionists out there. Maybe you're going to come back in about a month when it's not so crowded. Did you happen to know that some gyms are banking on that fact that you won't come back, but you'll still pay the membership fee? Why is that? It's because we have a desire for something but then we don't follow up with the commitment. So don't be that person. It's a new year. Take the opportunity to make the commitment to a healthier lifestyle. Now we know the world is filled with negativity. All you gotta do is watch the news. Um, but if you take a step back and you look around, you'll actually start to notice kindness is all around. But the art of kindness involves a spirit of helpfulness of being generous and considerate without expecting anything in return. Maybe you'll notice someone's holding the door open for the next person, or perhaps you pay for the driver behind you in the drive through I love doing that, especially when I can sneak away. A really quick story. My sister and I, this is a while ago, we went out to dinner, and this is we're going to go to a concert. So we were in the restaurant. We got there early. We're the only ones there. There was a man in the lobby picking up his food to go. Nobody else was really around. And so I just happened to say to the guy, because I enjoy talking, 
I'm so excited. I'm going out to dinner with my sister. And then we're going to a concert. You have to remember, I don't get out much. Okay, so he smiled. He got his food. He left. And my sister and I enjoyed our dinner. And then the waiter comes over. Oh, would you like dessert? Oh, no. I looked at my watch. Oh, no. No, no. No dessert. We got to go. I don't want to be late for the concert. And then he said, are you sure you don't want dessert? And I'm like, uh, no, no, thank you. And then he said, well, that man in the lobby paid for your dinner. He said he wanted you to have a great night. I still get chills thinking about that. Did that man make my night? Absolutely. But more importantly, his act of kindness, it left a lasting impression. So anytime I get the opportunity, I love to tell that story. Giving kindness is often simple. It's free. It's health enhancing. A kindness has been shown to increase self-esteem, empathy, and compassion, and improve our mood. This one, too, can decrease our blood pressure and cortisol. That is that hormone that's directly related to our stress levels. And kindness can increase our sense of connectivity with others. It decreases loneliness. It helps combat low mood, and it improves our relationships. It's also contagious. So, you know, you show somebody kindness, it's like encouraging others to join in with their own generous deeds. Now, physiologically, kindness can positively change our brain by boosting our levels of serotonin and dopamine. So those neurotransmitters, they're the ones that produce that feeling of satisfaction, of well-being and cause the pleasure and reward centers of our brain to light up. Even endorphins, that's our natural, our body's natural painkiller, that may also be released when they show kindness. But what often happens? We forget about showing kindness to ourselves. We're often our own worst critic. So don't forget that part. Give yourself positive affirmations and be kind to yourself as well. Loneliness. Okay, we're going to have a webinar this year dedicated to this topic of loneliness and your health. By nature, humans are not solitary creatures. We thrive through connecting with others, which typically happens uh, without much thought or effort. However, in a recent advisory, the U.S. Surgeon General recognized that people are struggling to connect and declared loneliness in the United States an epidemic. Now, there's a difference between being alone and feeling lonely. When you're alone, there's nobody with you. And often I'm telling you the truth, when my husband and the teenagers are out of the house, I love it. But when you're lonely, you feel disconnected from others, even if they're right beside you. We all feel lonely at times. So common sense tells us that this loneliness epidemic, it may be part of our changing culture, uh, the pandemic, the spread of electronic devices, social media, and the more hybrid or work from home jobs. So well, what can we do to combat loneliness? Well, the prescription for a Addressing loneliness is more human connection. So stop telling yourself that you're lonely because something is wrong with you. That negative self-talk can keep you in a cycle of isolation. Reach out to others in small ways, even just by smiling or helping someone at the grocery store or talking to someone when you're out and about. Practice connecting with colleagues, friends, family, loved ones, on a more deeper level, rather than sticking to the superficial topics of, you know, the weather. It's, it's the deeper connections that help us to feel close to someone. Don't fool yourself into believing, oh, hey, I'm totally connected. I got a ton of friends um, because the ones on social media, those are your contacts or, or acquaintances. Such media connections, they are not the same as truly active friendships. You also want to get involved in activities that interest you that involve other people. Maybe there's church activities or volunteer groups, book clubs, 
Maybe you take a dancing class or uh, some kind of sport kind of thing that involves other people. Any type of that group activity that's going to draw you in. And when friends or coworkers, if they invite you to a gathering or something, you really have to go. I said, just being around people, even if you're not initially inclined to do so, this is really good practice. It helps you with making friends, it, but that's a gradual and process. So it takes patience, um, but go. Even if you don't really want to, you should still go, even for a little bit. If you have struggle with loneliness, don't be afraid to reach out to a mental health professional. Um, be honest about what it feels like to be lonely and how it's affecting you. Sometimes just having a sounding board or support can help you get started on the path to feeling less lonely. It's important to be aware of symptoms and acknowledge when your responsibilities start to become too much to handle. So burnout, it isn't a medical diagnosis, but it's generally feelings of depleted energy or exhaustion because of continual stress. So the symptoms of stress, probably familiar with, but things like headaches or muscle aches, upset stomach, fatigue, anxiety, irritability, uh, lack of being able to focus, and social withdrawal. Nobody is superhuman. We all have our limits. So what can we do? to avoid burnout. Well, the first thing is to ask yourself, you know what, what is important right now? Practice being present in the moment. If you're driving, pay attention to the road. If you're having dinner with a friend, be engaged and present. Now, before you agree to sit on a committee or even host a dinner party, recognize that it means giving up time that can't be replaced. Also, anticipate that the time commitment will probably be longer than your initial estimate. Factor that into your decisions about, is this worth your time? Also, be willing to say no. It's okay and it's an important to set aside time for yourself. You got to schedule it on the calendar and try not to let those other responsibilities encroach on that time. This means saying no to some of the other requests for your time and talents. Of course, ask for help or support. Don't feel as if you have to do it all yourself. So whether you reach out to coworkers, maybe friends or loved ones, support and collaboration can help. And of course, you've got to try to make sure you're getting enough sleep, that you're eating healthy meals during the day and you're exercising regularly. That is hopefully going to give you the energy to take on life's responsibilities. Uh-oh, here we go. I know what you're thinking. Laura, what are you talking about? This is super hard. After all, we're all staring at a screen right now, right? Um, but I'm really, what I'm talking about are the smartphones, the gaming systems, and other different types of screens. Now, they're everywhere. Homes, bedrooms, offices, vehicles. It's in our pocket. It's in our purses. But have you ever considered how much time is spent on a screen? Now, while these electronics are helpful or entertaining, the amount of time we spend on them can become a bit of a problem. Here's my last poll. What would you do if you put your device down? This is, you can do more than one answer on this one as well. Launch this one. All right, just launch the poll. Again, you can answer more than one on this one. What would you do if you put your device down? What would you really like to do? Would you sleep? Would you just simply relax and maybe look out the window? Would you go visit a friend? Would you get outdoors, spend more time outdoors, or even do like a movie night or a game night with friends, with family? Or is there something else that you would do with your time? All right. A couple more seconds on this one. What would you do with your time? All right, so let me go ahead and end the poll. And then I'm going to share the results here. Can you see that? It's kind of a mixed bag. 60% of folks would get outside. But then you got right behind that 
57%, which is probably related as well, relax. We never have enough time to relax. Sleep, that's related to relaxing too. Movie night, game night. Then we've got something else and then visit a friend. So thank you so much again for participating in that. All right. Fun to see what people would do. So don't get me wrong. You know, I, I'm a fan of technology tool. I think it's a it's a great tool. Um, but just keep in mind it can also hinder our well-being and make us feel disconnected from those around us. So when we take a break from our devices, that's gonna free up some more time to be active or enjoy time with loved ones. I am guilty of texting my husband when we're both working from home. He's upstairs, I'm downstairs. So what, what does that do? It lessens the intimate eye-to-eye -eye contact we have communicating with one another. Oh my gosh, don't even get me started when we go out to dinner with our teenagers and everyone's on their phone, okay? We are on our devices. And then because of that, we're disengaged with something else. Well, what is that something else? Is it our family? Is it our friends, our job? Is it exercise, chores, or our hobbies? This is related to the loneliness topic. So as we begin the new year, think about how reducing screen time frees up more time to connect with others and explore the world around us. There are lots of well-being benefits to cutting down on screen time. We know that physical activity is good for our health, but devices could be cutting into that exercise time. So maintaining healthy habits can be hard if we're spending too much of our time using screens. Of course, unless you're using your device to exercise. I'm talking about when we're shopping or we're social media scrolling, okay? Exploring and learning about the world is an important part of life. Oh my gosh, children are naturally curious, but you know what? Adults like to explore too. So instead of spending time on the devices, think to yourself and encourage yourself and those around you to try some new activities. Putting down our phone and going outside, doing an activity, it can boost our mood as well. And also gives us a feeling of being accomplished and it improves our well-being. Also being part of a community that's around us helps us to feel connected to others and it's really beneficial to our health as well. Now, many of the topics I covered today will be explored on a much deeper level through our monthly wellness webinars this year. So if you join me next month, we're doing heart health. Um, in March, we've got hot nutritional topics like intermittent fasting. Um, March is National Nutrition Month. We're going to have a talk on get stuff done. So this is a, another way of looking about how can we be efficient and effective if you're working from home or if you have a hybrid work situation, we're gonna talk about joy again. So finding joy in good work. So that is a presentation on emotional health. Live long, live better is all about aging gracefully and creating a healthy home. In this webinar, we're actually gonna look at what may be positively or negatively impacting our health right under our feet. Sleep. That's always an important and popular topic, so we can't seem to get enough quality or quantity of sleep. So we'll take a look at that in the Rise and Shine webinar. We'll re, uh, look at understanding burnout. So this is a more in-depth look at the topic, what it is, the symptoms, how to avoid it or manage it. And then as we round out the year, as we're getting closer to the holidays, we'll be doing a webinar on financial well-being, loneliness and your health. And then we will end the year with a rest, relaxation, and rejuvenation webinar. We're talking about nature, reconnecting with nature in that one. So I hope you will join us for those. Um, thank you for your attention today. Uh, these next slides are programs that help HealthNet members um, build or maintain their healthy habits. So our members can find all of our wellness programs and resources when they log in to their HealthNet account. Another great way to start off the year, if you haven't done this already, or you did it last year and you want to try it again, a health risk assessment. Those are designed to give you a snapshot of your health status 
in key areas such as nutrition, exercise, emotional health, financial well-being, and much more. Healthy habits can be a challenge, so don't do it alone. Health coaching is a great way to get support when you're trying to make a lifestyle improvement, things like managing stress or eating healthier or quitting smoking. Support with family, friends, and a coach can help you keep you motivated. And craving to quit. Now, this is HealthNet's tobacco cessation program. This program is designed to help users who are ready to quit to permanently break their addiction to tobacco. Eat right now. This helps um, our participants with healthy eating habits, not dieting. So it's going to include things like triggers, cravings, healthy habits, and emotional eating. And we know life is stressful. So if managing stress is part of your new, new year plans, this program is going to focus on ways to de-stress, help you stay in the moment. It includes tools, videos, modules that will help you build resilience and decrease chronic stress. And you will notice that this program is open to everyone, both HealthNet and non-HealthNet members. You just have a different login. HealthNet members, don't forget to take advantage of the discounts. We have discounts to places like Weight Watchers, Chiropractic and Acupuncture Services. Maybe you need an extra pair of prescription sunglasses or computer glasses. We of course have discounts to hearing aids and screenings and the fitness clubs, Active and Fit. It's $28 a month, gets you access to all the gyms in the network. There's no contract. You can change gyms as often as you would like to. Just remember to go. And HealthNet offers a variety of online health challenges through our wellness platform. Every month we have challenges on stress, steps, sleep, nutrition. Again, open to everybody. You just have a different login. And HealthNet members, in February, we have a specific challenge for you. Jump start your heart, improving your cardiovascular health with exercise, stressing less, uh, getting adequate sleep and eating nutritious diet. So feel free to join in on those in February. And last but not least, our next webinar in February is going to be Love Your Heart all year long, not just in February. We're going to be talking about some cooking tips. I'm going to do a few quick cooking demos. Laura's trying to cook in the kitchen. Um, and some healthy plate ideas. We're going to talk about some smart shopping along with, of course, heart healthy habits. And we'll talk about those heart healthy screenings, some fitness and weight management tips as well. And then a little bit on understanding the significance of your heart health numbers. So thank you so much for your time today. Again, everyone who registered for this webinar will receive a link to the recording in just a few days. Thank you for your time. Happy New Year, everyone. Feel free to exit the webinar at this time.